Nice to see you all here bright and early. So as you know, we've all been working really hard on a number of different tools and parts of the recruitment and selection process. And if I can get your attention over here to this circle that I've put on the wall, and I know I draw a beautiful circle, don't I? I'm wondering if you can kind of help me fill in some of the things that we've been doing over the last few weeks that relate to recruitment and selection. Anyone have any thoughts? Yeah, Shop the descriptions. Shop descriptions, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, anyone else? Job analysis. Job analysis. Can't do job descriptions without job analysis, can we? Okay, good. Uh, Lisa. HR planning. HR planning. We absolutely need to start with HR planning. Perfect. Okay. Internal job postings. Internal job postings, definitely. And Melissa. Job ads. Job ads, yeah. So external job ads as well. Okay, that's great, great. Now, some of you have probably noticed that outside the circle, if you can see the letters, it actually spells culture. Why do you think I have culture around the outside of the circle? Thomas? Because all aspects that are involved in the circle need to be fitted towards the culture of the organization. Yeah, and if it doesn't fit, what happens? If it doesn't fit, then it just won't work overall. It just won't work. If it doesn't fit the culture, it's not gonna work. That's great. Why do I have competencies in the middle of the circle? Um, because <laughs> employees applying for jobs need to have um, certain competencies in order to be successful through um, all the process. That's right, yeah. So where can they find out about competencies? They can find out job ads. Job ads. Mm -hmm. all, all of these places, exactly, great. All right, so moving forward through this kind of cycle of recruitment and selection, what I'm going to try to do next with you is bring together this concept of culture and competencies, and we're going to develop cover letters and resumes. Now, you might go, that's nice. Why are we developing cover letters and resumes? Well, because in the near future, you're going to be applying, all of you, to a staffing officer job, a real one. Not to be hired, but just a staffing officer job. And then, you're going to work together in groups and develop both a screening tool, and it's all going to culminate in a panel interview that you're all going to participate in as either a candidate or an interviewer and that's going to be structured situational. And the good news is it's going to be videotaped. Aww. So you can all have a chance to kind of see yourself on the videotape. Okay, great. So before we get started, it's been a few weeks since we've actually talked in depth about culture and competency. So I just want to do a quick little check-in with all of you uh, before we get started on to make sure that you're still familiar with those concepts. And I also want to just see what your understanding is on the purpose and importance of cover letters. Okay, so I have a quick Kahoot quiz for you. Um, I told you to bring your smartphones in advance, and uh, I told you how to log on to log on to the Kahoot website. So as you can see, you can just join the game by putting this pin in eight six four six one one. And as soon as everyone does that, you can put in a fun name. I know you all like to compete with each other. Then we'll get started on the questions. Is everybody ready? Ready? Let's go. <laughs> Which of the following is an example of organizational culture? Core values, beliefs, and behavior patterns? The mission statement? The languages spoken by the employees? Or formal titles? Everybody, click on your answer. Okay, looks like everyone got that one right. Core values, beliefs, and behavior patterns. Oh, the Lady Susans are in first place. <laughs> I can't think of any Susans that would be lazy. All right. If a culture is based on consensual decision making, it will be trusting, confident, open, and slow, rushed and chaotic, micromanaging, or enabling, thorough, and suspicious. Trusting, confident, open, and slow. All right, those ladies and Susans, they're doing awesome. <laughs> the major factors influencing organizational culture include HR policies and practices, amount and style of communication, leadership styles, or all of the above. You got all the answers? 
Well, we've got all of the above, which is the top answer, and that is correct. All of those things are major factors in clinical culture. Oh, Sam, you've gotten to the top of the round. Good job. What are competencies? Standards of performance attached to job duties. Duties required by law for your job. Observable, measurable skills, abilities, behaviors, and attitudes. Or your level of comfort with the job you're performing. Almost everyone got that one right. Observable, measurable skills, abilities, attitudes, and behaviors. Great job. Sam's still at the top of the scoreboard, but Jay is eating pizza with a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which two types of competencies should you demonstrate when applying to a job? Technical and behavioral, abstract and concrete, or an organizational or underlying notion and proficiency scale? core and organizational, and those are kind of the bigger, broader ones that aren't so job specific. Okay, well I really get the sense that you're all feeling still quite good with the concepts of culture and competencies, and I have a good sense that you also understand the importance and purpose of the cover letter. Um, so let me just ask you a few things. How many of you really love your cover letter right now? No. Not many. No. One person. Camille, do you like yours? Yeah. What do, what, what do you like about it? Uh, I just I tried to kind of open it with some metaphors or analogies to try to catch the reader's attention and then kind of draw it back to the organization. So, okay. so far it's worked for me. Do you, do you remember sort of how you opened it? Or? Uh, yeah, I've had like a few different ones over the years, but usually I use the analogy with peanut butter and jelly sandwich to say that two things should go together, meaning oh. myself and the organization. Okay, that sounds really cool. Very interesting. Um, how, how about anyone else? Do you like the opening of your cover letter? Do you find that tough to do? Haley, what about you? Um, I find I can never really get it started. Like, I'm always trying to say like something along the lines of, please accept my application, but I just can't figure it out. Do a lot of people use that kind of opening? Please, yes. Please yes. accept my application? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, why do you think it's so hard to open your cover letter? Why is it such a tough thing to do? I don't know. <laughs> Um, I find it hard to like stand out because I know there's so many people applying and yeah. I want to say something that stands out for the rest of them. I just don't know how to do that. I just don't know how to do it without sounding maybe a little too goofy maybe. Yeah. yeah. Maybe what did you want to say? Um, that was the same. Just yeah. trying to get the attention of someone yeah. among like everyone else and how do I do that without like exactly. sounding too goofy or kind of sounding too boring. Exactly, yeah. Thomas? I just don't really know what's the most important thing to say about myself. Well, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, it's hard to know. And there's so many wonderful things. Right now, you know, we have to narrow it down. <laughs> I, I feel that they're looking for some keywords, which, mm. which I feel maybe I fail to put it in my uh, cover letter. Yeah, and, that's a really good point. And they could be, especially if you're using an, an automated screening tool that, that's yeah. looking for that. Yeah. Well, I want you to know that you're not alone. A lot of people really struggle with openings of, of cover letters. And so just to show you that, I've given you at your tables some samples of real openings to cover letters. And I want you to work within your small groups at your tables. And this is what I'd like you to do. I want you to review each of the cover letter openings and determine if those particular openings cover these kinds of three areas. Information about the job competencies, information about the organizational culture, and then a connection between the candidate and the culture and the position for which they're hiring. And after you've had a chance to analyze it, I'm going to go over here on the board and have you read your opening out to the class, and I'm going to note down over here anything that falls into these three categories, okay? And then you can also comment in general on it, whether you think it's a good opening or if it has some weaknesses. Does everyone understand what I want you to do? Okay, you're going to have seven minutes to do that, so you can, you can start working on it. Let's look at another opening. Who's got number four? Oh, you do. Okay, Brian, would you mind reading that to the class? Sure. So sorry, I just found your email in my spam folder today. I hope this application is not too late. I'm just looking for a paid job in marketing that I believe I could do well. I'm not too picky. I am, however, an excellent copywriter and am very comfortable editing and design. And that's it? That's it. Great, okay. All right, so do we have anything in there that would actually demonstrate the competencies for the job? They say they're excellent copywriter, comfortable with editing and designing. Excellent copywriter, comfortable with editing and designing. Okay, good. All right, anything about the 
culture? No. Nothing? No. No, there's Nothing. no mention of it. All right, what about the position? It just says they're looking for anything in it. And I mean, on the comfortable editing thing, they couldn't even edit their spelling correctly. So <laughs> That's I don't know. Right. They're That's right. Exactly, exactly. So there was nothing, we don't know what position they're applying for. It says just any, any paid job. Any paid job. Except they're not too picky. Okay, they're not too picky. So what do you think of this opening? Pretty careless. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty careless, yeah. Probably not going to get you tired. Yeah. Probably not likely to get you, get you screaming at all. Okay. That's great. Well, that was great. That was a great review of all of these job openings uh, that were all very interesting. Um, we certainly were able to get a bit of information from them. Do you think any of these job ads would actually get the person screened in? No. No, no probably not. Do you think they'd get shortlisted with any of these? No. no. <laughs> no not likely. Um, which part was the hardest to find in these openings? What part were, did you really struggle to find of these three categories? Brian? A good cover letter. <laughs> true, definitely true. Um, information about the culture. Yeah, there was literally not a whole lot about the culture. So it must be really tough then to find information about culture, is it? No. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. It's the same for the position as well. Yeah, I mean, some of them, a lot of them didn't even tell you what the position was, so it was really hard to know if the competencies actually went with the position. This cover letter literally said, I don't know much about your organization. You Do you think that's a good thing to tell people? No. no. Definitely, not. Definitely not. So if we were going to brainstorm on some sources of information on company culture, and you can use your notes if you want to refer to them, if you need to. I'll start you off with one, websites. What other places do you think we can find information? Julia. A local newspaper. Newspapers. Absolutely. Triage. Triage. Where do we hear the word triage? 
Emergencies, our emergency room. Yeah, that's, that sounds pretty stressful when we have to triage in our workplace kind of thing. So what would you want, what would you think about applying to that job? What would you be thinking about? First of all, would you think it's the right fit for you?
resource specialist. Okay, perfect. We're just going to add that on the end to make it even better. Sure. All right, good job. Anyone else? Jason up? Um, we did the Shoppers Drug Mart one. Okay. Shoppers Drug Mart is an organization that prides itself on being customer centric and uh, it believes in the success of its people as well as maintaining high national standards. My background in HR of quality control, along with my over 10 years experience in customer service, makes me a key fit for the position of human resource specialist. Excellent. And so, again, do we have two things about the culture? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Customer centric. Thank you all so much for your participation and we'll see you next week.